Welcome, everybody, and thank you all for joining me this morning. Uh, yeah, this is kind of like a surprise, um, a surprise live right here this afternoon, Thursday afternoon. Um, like my description says, I have not done one of these in a minute. That is preaching reactions. Uh, but I noticed when I go to my YouTube dashboard and I look at all my algorithm and data and analytics i uh find that uh, i found that my reaction to a td jake's preaching was like over a thousand views <laughs> so to uh trick the youtube algorithm i figure let me go back to uh doing some preaching reactions and i haven't done i think this is like my i did one with uh, Stephen Furtick. I did one with Joel Austin. I did one with TD Jakes. And I did one with the young cat from Ohio. I forget his name, man. You guys forgive me. I forgot his name. He's he's uh up and coming preacher. And uh fantastic. I need to upload that video too on YouTube. Anyway, uh always enjoy TD Jakes and um can't say I've heard one bad preaching from him uh and so it's always a blessing i've been listening to preaching obviously uh just because i feel like i always con i constantly need to hear god's word and be inspired uh, but i've been doing um i've been listening to a lot of uh, noel jones which i should be doing a preaching reaction on but uh, i'm not <laughs> i'm doing a uh, td jake's reaction and for that I have uh, T.D. Jakes here, and it is the message called Bigger Than You Think. Bigger Than You Think, he uploaded it, or uh, they uploaded it on YouTube. It premiered on September 20th, 2020, and it has 1 million views already since that time. So, and 27,000 likes, 1,000 share, uh, 1,000 dislikes. I have no idea who those thousand is. Why would anybody dislike that? Who knows? Uh, let me, let me go and take a look at something here. I want to make sure that the comments are coming in so that you can interact with me. Uh, let me just see if I'm on. <clears throat> You're welcome to interact with me. I'll bring your comments onto the live. This is a live reaction. So if you're coming here um, uh, and, and I'm not engaging to your show or to your comments, rather, it's most likely because uh, you are watching on a replay. All right. So you're not watching it live. But anyway, I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed it when I was doing it. I still listen to preaching, but I have not done a preaching reaction. So this is going to be first since I got this software called Ecamm. And if you're not yet an Ecamm, if you don't have Ecamm yet, Ecamm Live uh, as a software for your live streaming and you have a Mac uh, machine, you should really consider it. I'll drop the affiliate link so that you can purchase it through me. But anyway, I'm Lemuel Aitude, and I'm about to do this preaching reaction by T.D. Jakes. This is my first time listening to this. I have not yet listened to this message. So we'll be reacting together. Um, and let me know if, if I'm doing all right. Like I said, I'm not sure if you are commenting. I would have you. I see that there are three people watching with me. So shall we go ahead and do it? All right, here we go. So pro. We are so going pro. to the Word of God. Just... Grab your Bibles wherever you got to get it from. Get up out of the bed. Get I'm going to lower him down a little bit. Samuel, chapter number 17. Ooh. 17 this is a King David story. The scriptures that the Lord has given us today. First Samuel chapter 17. Where is my Bible? Here it is. 
We respect his word. We are standing for God's word. Oop, better take my hat off we too. We honor it even above our leaders, our preachers, our pastors, our presidents. Amen. We stand for them, we're going to stand for God. Yes, yes. Again, uh, Samuel, 1 Samuel, 17. chapter 17. 17. All right, where are we? 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 And Jesse said, let me see. David, his son, take now for we're not, brethren. Wait, let me see. And Hold on. We're not, we were younger. We would do what we call Bibles up, right? So we would have like, um, we would have our youth leader or what have you. We would all raise our Bibles and then they would say, Bibles up. And then we'll have raise our Bibles and then they will mention a chapter or a verse or a scripture and then we'd have to look for it. So I got good at doing that. His volume is low. Okay, let's see. So let me increase it a little bit more. All right, thanks, Ant. There's that's my boy Anthony. Where you been, bro? Where have you been, my man? I miss you. Okay. So let me go ahead. Anyway, Bible's up, first Samuel chapter 17. And it's a story about David. All right. I know he preaches this a lot. So let's see what take is he gonna have. 17 17. All right, so he has it up there. I have it in my Bible. Let's get going far of this parched corn and these ten loaves and run camp to thy brethren and carry these ten cheeses unto the captain of their thousand and look how thy brethren fare and take their pledge now Saul and they and all the men of all right. Israel were in the battle I love the way he's reading the scripture, by the way. It's just you just feel like you're about to hear a message just from how <laughs> that's my that's my cue. When I'm listening to a preaching, I'm like, this preaching is gonna be good just the way the preacher is reading the scriptures. Go ahead. Valley of Elah fighting with the Philistines. And David rose up, listen to this, and David rose up early in the morning. God bless you, Sister Clara. And left the sheep with the keeper. Thank and you. And took and went as Jesse had commanded him. And he came to the trench as the host was going forth to the fight and shouted for the battle. For Israel and the Philistines had put the battle in array, army against army. And David left his carriage in the hands of the keeper of the carriage and ran into the army and came and saluted his brethren. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine the champion. of the Bible, Goliath by name. Goliath. Out of the armies of the Philistines and spake. How many preachings, I think, probably, what do you guys think? How many David preaching, heard them. how many preachers preach on David? And all for like the year, the right? Man, I think I preached on him this and year. Were, they were sore afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have ye seen this man that is come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up. And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. I like free taxes. No taxes for the family. By him saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? and taketh away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? And the people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killeth him. So shall it be done, so shall it be done. And Eliab, his elder brother, heard when he spake unto the man, and Eliab's anger was kindled. A little bit more. T.D. Jakes is a little bishop, is a little bit more dramatic. And with whom hast thou left than usual sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and the naughtiness of thine heart. For the way he's reading this. <laughs> that thou mightest see the battle. Home where you belong. And David said, What have I now done? Yes. Is there not a call? That'd preach right there. 
just can that amen? verse. Amen. Can you say amen again? Amen. Look at somebody and say it's bigger than you think. So strange, that say empty again, place. It's bigger than you think. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for what you're about. Look how massive that building is. I thank you because the flower fades and the grass withers, but the word of the Lord stands forever. He had his fingers up like he's playing the organ. He used to be a pianist or an organist, Bishop Jakes, uh, before he became a full-time preacher. He used to play his own his own music. He used to lead his own uh, worship services back in Virginia before they moved to uh, to Texas. Before T.D. Jakes became T.D. Jakes. I believe you for increase today in the invincible, eternal, immutable name. Hey, let's talk about that a little bit, right? It's that moment before you get known. All right, people know you because I believe there was like, I think there were maybe 50 families that moved from Virginia uh, when Bishop Jakes decided that he felt called to Texas. There were about 50 families, if I'm correct. Uh, I may be wrong on that. And somebody correct me on the comments. Uh, but before he was known, before he became T.D. Jakes, the T.D. Jakes we know now, there's that season where only a handful of people knew him. You know, I guess he was fairly popular in Virginia, but not nationwide until he moved to Texas, where he started Potter House there. But there's that moment where you kind of like in between the flux, you know, where where you are you're not yet in your destiny and you're not yet known, um, you know, and you have to continue continue the calling that God has placed in you right now. Like he said, he in his own um his own admission that he was playing his own worship he was leading his own worship services behind the piano you know and that was maybe 30 or plus years ago but um yeah that that time that season where you know you're not sure of the promise of god you're not sure and then you feel a call to move like sometimes i feel like a call to move you know, to go someplace else, but always afraid to do those major moves. So I, 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 I really applaud uh, West Virginia. I'm sorry, John said, John Crompton corrected me, not Virginia, West Virginia. Thank you, bro. Um, where, uh, you know, you're kind of like afraid to do something major. Um, that's huge, right? I mean, if 50 families, John, please correct me. If 50 families moved with him, uh, yes, thank you. Thank you, Pastor. If 50 families came to move with him, yes, from West Virginia, I apologize, I said Virginia. He was fairly established there, 50 families. If you think about family, right, you're getting at least a couple and then maybe one or two children. So you're talking about 100, maybe 150 people moved from West Virginia to Texas, relocated, lift up everything. I mean, you're talking about faithful people going. But that move, most of us probably will not move. I don't know if many preachers would move and relocate a good growing church. I'm, I'm just saying 50 people. Please correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm mistaking this. 50 families um, move with him, right? Thank you, Brother E. Could you imagine that? Like, you're talking about 50 families, so there must have been more families that stuck around, okay? So many families stuck around in West Virginia, so he might have had already 200, 300 members in this church and then he decides i feel led by god called by god to move to um uh to dallas could you imagine that would you do that i'm not sure i'm not i i mean i don't have that man i've got like maybe less than <laughs> 60 i've got some faithful people i firstly i'm not sure if i would move secondly i'm not sure if those people would move with me um but yeah, that takes a lot of courage, man. A lot of courage and a lot of faith. And that's what I feel from his messages, Bishop Jakes' messages. Every time I listen to him, there's that faith element. 
And uh, it's got to be rooted in the fact that he trusted in God, believed in God uh, to relocate when he's already doing something in West Virginia. Would God have done for him in West Virginia what he's doing now through him and for him in Dallas? Who knows? Who knows? But he felt called to move and he moved. Uh, and here he is. If somebody has... Um, Maybe a deeper insight as to why he moved to Dallas. Maybe you've read a book from him. Um, please let us know. All right, we're going to go on because it's it's uh, this is an hour-long preaching. And I'm not sure if we have the tolerance to sit here uh, and watch me react <laughs> for another hour. All right, man, anyway, here we go. Christ our King and all the believers in the house said amen. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen again. There's nobody in the house. <laughs> we are all in our houses. And he's preaching like people are in the house too, man. This is awesome. Today, it is not the normal text that we would consider. It stops short of dealing with the magnanimous, powerful display of God's power through his instrument that defeated the foe of Goliath. And yet it does not even examine who David is in the fullest potential of his power and his prophetic value. The sliver of the text that I've chosen to <laughs> discuss this. with you today. Sometimes I wish I could preach like this. I'm just so unsophisticated. It is, it is, it is, <laughs> it's it just is so sophisticated, Bishop. To us, because we know how the story is. Right. And we know the story, but I want to... I want you to indulge me in a moment and imagine if you were David and you didn't know how the day was going to end. Imagine if you were David and you had listened to your father that night give you instructions what you were to do. Now, understand all of your bigger brothers are in the battle. They have fancy swords and uniforms. They have shields. Mm -hmm. They have put on all of this armor. They have red velvet garments and capes uh, adorning them <laughs> because they are the army of Israel. And you, <laughs> you just... Yeah, I think so. The man, uh, the man is a preaching that machine. That they left at home to take care of the sheep. He's the baby boy. Yeah, he's the baby boy. And I want to talk to you about that because he is the baby boy. He's the little one. I love the fact that we all know he's so preaching he's in an empty room. But the he's preaching like there is thousands. Assignment. There are thousands. And he does this with this attitude. He mm. makes up in his That's mind a mindset, that right? Morning, I will rise up early. Just because people are not there doesn't mean the message to somebody to, to be a loses its power, in my right? Absence. While I run this Look at that empty place, but he is delivering this message with value the way it's supposed to be delivered. Of corn or wheat or whatever substance it was and 10 loaves of bread and run down here with a little lunch. And in essence, David is a delivery boy. It's a little, it's a, it's a little thing that he set out to do. You must understand when we start talking about this that David has no idea what will happen by the end of the day. Yeah. It is not the mighty majestic moves of God that we need help with how to handle. It is That's called alliteration, right? Mighty moves. <laughs> that stand in between the mountain and, 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 and that we live in most of the time. We have more days of normalcy and complacency than we do of spectacular displays of power. This is just another morning for David to get up with a yet another chore to do. And he wipes his face and brushes his teeth and grabs his bag full of food and decides I'm going down there to be at a particular place to do what my father told me to do. Yeah. What I want you to understand, though, in spite of the simplicity of the assignment, in wow. spite of the smallness of the assignment, in spite of how little it is, in spite of how little All David right. himself is, in spite of the fact that he is so young and too young to be in the battle, I want you to understand. Bishop is creating contrast here because he's about to deliver something. The little things, little things matter. Things matter. 
And until mm. you understand that little things mm. matter, you will not Wasn't I just talking about that? Your destiny. Just simple. Well, He's preaching in an I'm empty room. Give you some lesson tips that, that I want you to jot down and I want you to remember. It's what separates the And he's making his message matter right watchers. here. The giant these killers these from the giant these watchers. Mm. Truths are just as relevant today as they have ever been. In fact, the first one I want you to, to write down is great people do little things with excellence. Oh, Lord. <laughs> great Jesus. people do little things with Woo! excellence. My God. Great people don't just do great things with excellence. They do little things with excellence. They understand how important it is Ugh. to do normal things. In fact, it is a sure. Ah, man, that'll preach. Well, it's preaching. But I, it just reminds me, this particular message, this particular part of this message reminds me of when I'm like sitting with my, my daughter. And she's she's six years old. She's learning how to write. And she writes all like sloppily. And I'm like, babe, please make every letter count. Make every letter count. Don't rush. Right? Make every letter count. Let the simple things be done as though it's big. Let's wow. Mm. Where my notebook? Where's my notebook? <laughs> A sign that you're going to end up in a great place when you give great detail to little things. When something oh little gosh. goes wrong and it bothers you. Oh when you want to make sure that everything is right, even though you don't have a title and you don't have a Woo! position and you don't My have God. a tradition and you don't have prestige, but you have a, a standard to which you hold yourself to. Mm. It's not about them. It's about a standard you hold yourself mm. to. And the standard is a standard of excellence. Excellence doesn't start when the lights come on. Oh, Lord. Excellence doesn't start when the crowd gathers. Mm. Excellence doesn't come when everybody Jesus. watches. Excellence is nurtured in mediocrity in ordinary days when you begin. Wait, wait. Excellence is nurtured in mediocrity. What? What? Say that again, Bishop. I'm not sure I, I heard what you said. Hold on. Say that again. It's nurtured in mediocrity in ordinary days when you begin to appreciate the power of the words before. Nothing about this story forewarns us of the significance of this day. There's no warning. There's no warning label. God puts no warning label on greatness. He does not tell you that when you meet this person. It is oh, yeah, here, a little bit. Segue. Segue. And this is, I I thought to me, but notice, I've noticed preachers, right? All, all the while, there's a lot of text and a lot of information that pops up. And please, this is not a judgment on T.D. Jakes or any of the preachers. Just an observation I've had. Where there's a lot of pop-up and lower thirds and a lot of streaming and a lot of ticker that goes on to these live and these videos about giving, right? And I am about giving, obviously. Uh, everybody needs money. This, it, you know, Bible tells us money answers all things. So I'm for the, the giving, but for me anyway, I was doing the same thing. And then I realized, you know what? My message here, I'm preaching this message to bring people to Christ, right? To get them to know Jesus. I should be inviting people to get to know Jesus more than I am inviting people to send me money. I'm just saying, I'm not, I'm not knocking anybody, or maybe I am. I don't know if I am, but that's just an observation for me. Like constantly text, give, all this stuff. I would love to see, this is what I would love. I would love to see Lower Third come in and out of a broadcast that says, Text, I give my life, or something like that, right? I give my life to Jesus, right? There's an invitation constantly to give your life to Jesus. And I know, for the most part, these preachers, along with myself, is preaching to the saved crowd. And like my, like me, they're, they're preaching to me, and I'm enjoying them. But there are maybe a few, maybe in, in, this, in this instance, a million people have viewed this, or there's been a million, over a million views, there's possibility that somebody that has not given their life to Jesus or maybe have turned back, or maybe have backslidden, or maybe want to come to the Lord. And, you know, we are fronting, I feel like, please forgive me. 
we are fronting the giving aspect as opposed to the receiving aspect of people receiving Jesus. I would love to see, hey, you are invited to give your life to Jesus, you know, more so than you're invited to give us some of your cash. I hope that's no shade. I'm, I do the same thing. I request for funds. I, I believe in tithing. I believe in giving. I do it. My family does it. Even my wife tithes to me. All right. So I believe it. But I feel like we are in, quote unquote, the business of inviting people to Christ. Um, and I see too many, too many give, give, give. That's that's the main output. And it's also on our it's also on our description. You want to give? And I hardly read, hey, you want to give your life to Jesus? Do this. Make it an invitation. I know I'm making an effort um, to make sure that's, that my invitation first is for people to come to know Jesus or to return to him. Anyways, that's this just my two cents. He does not tell you that when you walk through this door, you'll never be the same again. He does not tell you that this little job, this little assignment that you're going on is going to be the catalyst through which your destiny is released. He doesn't tell you anything like that. David is the baby of his family. He, he has a little chore to do. It's just an ordinary chore. He has a little assignment to take care of. He has to manage his normal and yet perform a little assignment. God has given him practice with managing responsibility because he is grooming him for greatness. I don't know who I'm talking to out there, but God is grooming you for greatness. Mm. I know it doesn't look I great right it. now. Your wallet doesn't look great right now. Your, your house doesn't look great right now. Your car doesn't look great right now. Your situation doesn't look great right now. People push past you trying to get to great people, but God is grooming you for greatness. If you cannot manage the little things, you'll never be able to manage the big things. If the little things overwhelm you, if you mm. complain and collapse about little things, you'll never be ready for the greater things that God is about to do in your life. But the Lord told me to get somebody ready. I don't know who it is, but uh, God told me to get you ready. If it's you, you ought to give him a praise. God told me to get you ready. In spite of how small it looks right now, it's bigger than you think. In mm. spite of how small you look mm. right mm. now, it's Thank bigger you. than you think. David does not know who he is yet. He's yet to realize the full strength and power of what he is about to be. David mm. has not been recognized as being a king. He doesn't really understand the magnitude of his position. He thinks he's just an errand boy. He thinks he's just going down there to carry mm. lunch. He has no idea he is going to be in the fight of his life. He he's... would have prepared differently if he would have known he was going into battle, but he came down there to do a little thing. Oh, but it was bigger than you think. Mm. David didn't know that he was walking into a battle and David didn't even oh, know gee. who Goliath was. Many of you have not yet met your Goliath, but your Goliath is coming. Your Goliath is coming and that's why I got to get you ready for it. You don't even know that your Goliath is coming and he's coming without warning and he's coming without an invitation and he's coming without you having preparation. It is just that everything that you have been through in your past has been getting you ready. The little things have been getting you ready. The small task has been getting you ready. The lion that attacked the cub is getting you ready. The bear that came down after your sheep. I need to do that ready. with my broadcast right now, right with there. The sign on their neck. Just the preparations right there. Goliath, That's good stuff. These light afflictions, which are but for a moment, but are for getting a moment. you ready for the fight of your life so that when you get in the fight of your life, it will Oof. not feel like the fight of your life because all of the fights that preceded it will cause you to a deal with this fight with another level of confidence and strength. That's why you got to rejoice when you've been afflicted. Rejoice when you've been up under attack. Rejoice when all hell has mm, broken loose you, in your Jesus. life because God's got you in training camp. I want to talk to somebody today that's in the boot camp of greatness. <laughs> oh, Ooh, the boot the camp, camp of greatness. Of greatness because you're boot camp you of you greatness. Know so good. God is about to blow your Jesus. Mind. Somebody logged on this broadcast today because God is telling you, I'm getting ready to blow your mind, shatter the way you think. 
Shatter your perspectives and your attitude. Shatter how you define greatness. Shatter how you define responsibility. Do they do the slower Shatter thirds after he's pressure. preached? Because this doesn't sound like he's preaching from a... Because where I'm getting ready to take you, what was precious to me... From a, a, an outline. And I got to recalibrate you. It's got to be pre-recorded, right? It's got to be... It's got to be program yeah, edited, not like now where I'm doing this all live. To him that is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that we may ask. Well, it's a premiere, think, so I suppose it's not live. More than all that we may ask or think according think, to hmm. the power. That Interesting. Works in, us. in other words, God will not live in the jail cell of your mentality. He will not limit himself mm. to be incarcerated by your ideas. In mm. other words, God is about to blow your mind. He said, I'm bigger than what you think. Mm. This day is bigger than what you think it is. This moment is bigger than what you think it is. Go ahead and get your little tin loaves and get on your little camel and saddle up and go ahead and put your little quilt on the back of the camel and ride on down to the camp because you think this is ordinary but it's bigger than you think because I'm able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that ye may ask God. I'm not sure if I should do it right now or maybe later on but since I'm getting into it now this speaks to a lot of us who are doing these lives on Sunday mornings and there's only a few people that click on or we only have a short amount a uh, short number of people that are part of our community that are faithful to our broadcasts and we think it's insignificant but maybe Bishop is telling us by maybe God is telling uh, at least those of us that are listening um, about the efforts that we're doing that we think it's small we think it's nothing but it's bigger than we think and uh, Whew. Yeah, I mean that's why that's why I upped my game a little bit with using or by using some of my professional equipment that I use for photography. And um, I'm I'm if if you're a preacher, you're watching this. It's a call for you to up your game, to up your presentation, to get a software like Ecamm Live, to get some new cameras, to get lighting, uh, to get um, some equipment for you to be, you know, to, to, to level up your broadcasting, um, because you're, you know, this is, this may be, may be a call from us by God to, to think that what we're doing may be small, but that's to us because it's maybe bigger than we think and it's time to level up, right? My thoughts are above your thoughts, my ways are above your ways. As high as heaven is above the earth, so are my thoughts above your thoughts, and my ways above your ways. And just because Amen. It out yes. small does not mean that yes, it's it's small. That. that's why the Bible said despise not the day of small beginnings. Because whenever God's getting ready to do great things in your life, He mm -hmm. tests you on small things. <laughs> God tests you on small things, small things. when he's about to do something big in your life. Few, you can't be faithful over many. Until you can be trusted with lunch, you cannot be trusted with giants. Wow. Oh, oh my God. Can't be trusted oh, with Lord. Lord. Oh, because my God. Out for the big thing. And when the big thing comes, you're going to be lazy. Woo! Until then, you're Woo! just lazy and slow. Oh, my goodness. And back and take oh, my easy. goodness. And my goodness. It my is goodness. How you handle the little things that determine. Oh, what's my goodness. Next my goodness. In your life. My goodness. Yeah. How many of us, this is speaking to me, right? How many of us expect that God's going to do some big thing in our lives and, and vi envision ourselves doing some massive things? I'm, let me talk about myself, envisioning myself doing some great things that are far reaching, that are going to sweep through many circles, many communities and reach people's lives. Uh, and, and expecting all this massive thing, expecting a gigantic, gigantic office um, but I'm not even preparing proper lunch, right? I'm not praying the way I need to pray. I'm not, 
I'm not studying the, the way I need to study. I'm not, I'm not prepping my messages the way it needs to be prepped. Uh, I'm I'm not prepping my team the way they need to be prepped. And we can't even get lunch right. <sighs> my God. Oh, God help us. Get your head right. Today, 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 today is an opportunity for you to get your head right. Today, people ignore the performance of little things waiting on the next big thing. But the next big thing is a little thing. Wow. I'm going to say that again. The uh, next big thing woo! is woo! a little thing. If David had over. Write that in the comments for the six of you that are watching. There too late. And if he would have got there too late, he would have missed the greatest moment of his life. Five minutes later, and none of it would have happened. 20 minutes later, and he would have missed this earth-shattering experience that was to come on his life. Suppose David was late with lunch. Suppose David That's was late with lunch. That's why you're not ready to be great until you think everything is important. Everything. Until everything. Me too, girl. To you. I love if Bishop. Had gotten there late, he been my favorite it. for David years early, before I even started pastoring. The timing has got to be right. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. With God, everything is about timing. With God, everything is about timing. There is a time to mourn, and there's a time to laugh, and there's a time to cry, and there's a time to plant, and there's a let me let me speak on this a little bit, right? And it's incredible when a preacher is watching a preaching because all these preachings come to you, all these messages come to you, you just want to express it. So here it is. Uh, I'm with I'm with people, and uh, I'm with a, a master group, right? O online, I have a group I'm involved in, and we're talking about certain ways to reach the audience, certain ways to 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 level up, certain ways to to kind of bring our our brand or or make some more money, right? Um, and the conversation was really making those little things count because it's the small things that'll bring you the big stuff. Uh, like if you are if you are not bringing it all the time, there may be a moment if if you are if you are faithful in the small stuff, right? There may be a moment where somebody is looking at you, and though you're not making money off of that thing you're presenting, maybe you're not increasing your audience in the thing that you're doing right now. But what we've found in this viral world, in this new global community, that the small stuff can bring you great results. Like there are people that do videos and they think it's nothing. And before you know it, they wake up the next morning and a million people has watched those videos. And if they were on YouTube, it could it could mean a thousand dollars to ten thousand dollars. Right. Or it could mean it could mean small amount of people liking the videos versus a million people liking the videos. And we have to bring our A game every single time. Uh, somebody mentioned it. The word Bradley has mentioned this. It's a little long for maybe those of us. It says here the word. He says the word is getting into the cracks and crevices that it never reached before. God said His word will reach the uttermost parts of the world, and it's getting there because of COVID. But we're looking at it wrong. Many ministers are seeing online ministry as not being enough. And not taking it seriously, but people are attending online sermons that would have never placed a foot in a church. It's not us. It's his word. Each of us just does our part and let him preach or let him create the increase. Preach the word. <sighs> My God. Right. We, we have to. Right. We got to preach that the word because mm, and there's a time that's so and good. God Bradley. You be there Thank you, sir. Lunch. And he does not tell you that the lunch is a trip switch that is going to connect you with your destiny. He just Ooh. tells you that it's lunch and sees will you be there on time. Oh, my God. Look at your neighbor and say, show up on time. Oh, my God. Jesus. Show up on time. David showed up as the fight was starting. He was exactly where he was supposed to be when he. Come on, procrastination, right? 
thinking that what you're doing doesn't matter, devaluing your effort. If you're going to spend time, if we're going to spend time on something, make it good. If you're going to if you're going to spend time anyway doing the thing that you're going to do, you're going to spend some time anyway like this this live, right? I'm going to spend time anyway. Present it properly. Do it right. Get a proper microphone. Get lighting. Get a proper equipment. Right? Your phone is not enough. Right? And, and you're saying, well, the little things matter. I know the content is king and your message uh, will be able to penetrate. Uh, but when when I got this software, for instance, when I got this eCam, right? And I put together my lighting. I put together my, my, my camera. And I was telling Bradley, Brother Bradley here. I was telling him when that when I came on the very first time and I looked like I knew what I was talking about. I look legit. I look like a um, uh, I'm an expert just because of my imagery. It's time to like present it as though it is big, even though you're doing something small. Even though I'm in this office, you know, Bradley's in Texas. Um, and Lisa, I believe she's not in New York either. So, as as Bradley said. It's the word of God. It's reaching out. And we have to present the word of God properly anyway, right? We've got to set the table anyway for God's word. And sometimes trying to be cheap and trying to cut corners and all those different things is, is, is not a good look. When, when you have the, pa the, the capacity to change it up, when you have the capacity to make it better, when you have the capacity to... Uh, to to upgrade when you have the capacity to level up level up he was supposed to be there that mm. is absolutely amazing the cataclysmic explosion of destiny and time collides when david jumps off of thank you lisa and shows up just as the battle has gone into array and the Philistines have begun to, so good. to attack Israel. David shows up in that exact moment. These are fantastic preachers, right? These are ex ex exhorters, expounders. He, he's, preach, he's preached about David a long time and many times already, and as many pre preachers have. And he's able to extract some of the nuggets from the word. And that's, that's what's up. That's what's up, right? He's looking at the little bread and and just the the uh, the you know Jesse's assignment for David, this 16, 17 year old kid being sent to the battlefield just for lunch. And Bishop is looking at it as this is not just lunch. This is an exercise of doing the right thing, the small thing, the right way, right? And uh, because it was predestined. Yes, it Pastor Antonio, one of my favorites as it well. Was predestined for generations to generations to generations. God has been setting things up. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you're about to walk into something that God has been setting up for a long time. My second. Well, let's 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 talk about that a little bit, Mother Vet. If God would have told David beforehand what he was planning, David most assuredly would have ran and hid. He didn't know what God was about to do. Actually, I I believe that. Because we know that when he got there, when he got there, he got emboldened and said, let me go and grab a hold of it. Right. So I think I think God was preparing him. Uh, so I think if God had told him, he might have overthought it. That's probably would have been right. He might have overthought it. Like for me, if if somebody was saying what you're doing right now, Jones, what you're doing right now, Lemuel is going to be seen by T.D. Jakes and he's going to invite you to go and have an interview with him. Right. If somebody told me that that this video, I may approach looking at this video and this reaction a little different. I might have overthink it. I might overthink it. I might overdo it. I may get out of character. So David, if God had told them, "Hey, David, you're gonna. This is your day. This is your day to be put to the front. This is your day to become national. This is your day to get your name recognized. This is your day." Maybe David would have thought about it a little bit more and would have gotten out of character. But since God didn't tell him. He went there with the same type of mindset. Just, I'm just here to do a job, right? I'm just here to do, to do what what my father told me to do, Jesse. And so when he got there, he was natural. It was raw. It was not a, a put on. So that's what I think it would be. I think that's what you're saying too, um, Mother Yvette. It's I'm okay if I. I hope I'm okay if I'm calling you Mother Yvette. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sister Yvette, right? Antonio, Pastor Antonio says, yes. Yes, you should have heard him read read the story of David earlier. I All right. Get to you is showing I got up for the battle 40 more minutes. Ah! Showing up showing for the battle. Up for the battle. battle. It's half the battle. Just showing up. Just being in your place. Just being where you're supposed to be. When you're supposed to be there is half the battle. You don't have mm. to have all the answers. You don't have to have all the solutions. Woo, somebody. You don't have to have the favor of the army. Oh you don't my God. Have, have the support of your brother. Listen. Just show up. Listen. Sometimes we think we have to have everything. We have to have the answers. We have to have everything. We were talking about this in my, in our mastermind group. We were saying, just create the program and, 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 or rather, rather create the advertisement to let people sign up for a program that you're creating. The program doesn't have to be finished. Just set it out there. Create the program as people come, right? Set it out there. Don't be afraid. Don't hesitate until the whole thing is, is, is perfected. Send it out there and perfect it as you are moving along. Just show up. You don't have to have everything. That's why the devil doesn't want you to be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Because half the battle is determined by showing up on time. Oh, Somebody God. Shout oh, hallelujah. Lord. Now, I want you to understand for David, it is just. All right. All right. What Pastor Bradley, Minister Bradley said. It works on many levels. God showed me a future where I'd be speaking before dignitaries. What he didn't show me is that it would be facilitated by what I'm learning and teaching others about the death of my granddaughter. If you have not seen, if you have not seen our conversation, Bradley and I's conversation uh, last Monday, unpacking, please view it. It's about grief. He, he shares his uh, the story of his family, he and his family, and the loss of their granddaughter, and how God directed him uh, into grief advisement uh, through this. It's powerful. Uh, you should see it. Maybe I'll, I'll link it down on the comments later. Uh, he continues on. He says, Bradley said, he knows the end, but never the middle. If he knew the middle, uh, he shows the end, but never the middle. If we knew the middle, all right. If we knew the middle, we'd turn back in most cases. Yes. Another morning. It's just another moment. For Israel, it's just another battle. For the Philistines, it's just another It's just fight. another battle. It's just another fight. Ah, it's normal for somebody. But this is our moment. It, we may be going into somebody's normal day. But it might be our moment. God. Providence they may be doing this already a long time. For future eventuality. Look at this. The timely preparation for future eventualities. That's providence. When you talk about God's providence. You talk about the things that God has been working on. Before David's father ever met his mother, God was working on this morning. Yes. Do you hear what I'm saying to you? It is only in this trip that we realize why David's great, great, great grandmother, Naomi, had to leave her home and go over into Moab. Yeah. For had Naomi not gone over into Moab, and there she found her sons getting married to a Moabitess named Ruth, and had she not lost her sons, and had she not lost her husband, and had she not spent 10 years in Moab, and had she not decided after 10 years, I'm going back, to Bethlehem and had Ruth not decided to go with her mother-in-law back to Bethlehem, she would not have met Boaz. And had she not met Boaz, they wouldn't have had the baby Obed. And had they not had the baby Obed, they wouldn't have had the grandchild Jesse. And had they not uh -oh. had Jesse, they He's wouldn't have up. had David. All of this, <laughs> this God has this been This is T.D. Jake's classic T.D. Jake's right here. It was important that David's great-great-grandparents would trace all the way back to Boaz. I wonder Boaz, if that big TV has Boaz his notes. And Ruth, that they would meet and that they would fall <laughs> in love. Preachers are thinking about right. And that through their I wonder if his notes are on that TV. Because God is positioning David to be king mm. on the throne. And he has to start the kingdom out with a kid. He has been working on this 
for years. Pastor Antonio and says, morning, every stone in David's in David's sack had the potential to knock out the giant as long as it didn't stay inside the sack. Every stone in David had the potential to knock out the giant as long as it didn't stay. <laughs> You're preaching up there, Antonio. <laughs> Come on, Pastor. Feels like an ordinary morning. Just another... Oh, God, I got to go. Daddy wants me to carry this lunch. Had he not... Did anybody go to that virtual woman that were loose? Miss the moment that God has been October 17th. Four generations. Wait, 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 wait. I don't wait. know who I'm talking to, but wait. you are just now coming into a wait. Had been planned that morning. He would have missed the moment that God had been planning for four generations. I don't know who I'm talking to, but you are just now coming into a moment that God has been setting up for four generations. Setting the stage that you would be in the right place at the right time. First of all, that you would be. <laughs> First of all, that you would be. And then that you would be at the right place at the right time. And this is the time that David now intersects with destiny. David goes down to meet Saul, not as his successor. He goes down to meet Saul as if he is running an Uber service with a lunch. God has strange ways of connecting you in the right place at the right time. Mm. Oh, hallelujah. That brings me to lesson number three. Providence makes sense out of the nonsensical things in life. There you go, Bradley. Makes sense. It's confidence monitor. Yes, this is it. Lesson three. Naomi couldn't figure out why did Providence. my husband die? Why did I lose my sons? Mm. And mm. why did I leave Bethlehem mm. to escape a famine and go to Moab for 10 years only to find out that the people who stayed in Bethlehem didn't die? Mm-hmm. It wasn't really the famine that drew her to Moab in the first place. What was it? It was God orchestrating her life so that she could bring Ruth into the lineage. Ah, it was so Ruth. Could show us that oh, like, like Jesus going to Samaria. It was not Samaria. It was a Samaritan woman. The unworthy, that in the lineage of Jesus' bloodline would come a Moabitess. Yeah. And when she comes home with Ruth, she just does not get it. She is bitter and she's upset because a lot of things you're trying to understand today, it may take years or generations for you to understand why you had to lose what you had to lose, who Ooh, you had Jesus. to lose, when you had to lose it. Nobody teaches about providence, but providence lets you know that your God is a strategist. Mm. He said, I lift up this one and I take down that one. Mm. I am God and besides me, there is no other. I decide who comes up and I decide who comes down. I am the potter and you are the clay and you got to trust me. Jesus Even yes. when it doesn't make sense, you got to yes. trust that my providence is stitching something together that your great, 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 great grandchildren are going to benefit from. I don't know whether you can handle that, but I'm preaching to somebody. I'm preaching to somebody right now that it doesn't have to make sense to you, Naomi. I don't have to explain why I had you move. I don't have to even explain why you lost your husband. I don't even have to explain why you lost your child. But over time, you will see that I never lost control of your life for a moment. Good God Almighty. I never lost control of your life, even when it felt like your life was out of control, when it felt like the devil run, when it felt like the devil had the victory, when it felt like you had utterly failed. I never lost control. I work all things after the counsel of my own will. And I move this and I move that and I move the other and I bring this one in and I take that one out because I'm working on something and it's going to be bigger than you think. It's going to be bigger than you think. Yes. I've been working on this for generations. It's going to be bigger than you think. Mm. 
Mm. So when David comes walking down to the battlefield carrying lunch, he thinks it's about the lunch. <sighs> it's not, not about, about the his lunch. lunch. It's not it's about, about what you're lunch. presenting. It's not it's about not that Sunday about sermon. It's mm. not about the food. It's not about the cheese. Oof. That was just what God used to get you in the field. Not even about day. COVID. <laughs> like your great great grandmother was gleaning in the corners of the field. Look at that. I orchestrated her to be over in the corner of the field so that Boaz would look out there and see her. Here's a cool tidbit. You know, Ruth does not mention God. I think it's only one of the books of the Bible that does not mention God. Uh, or God speaking, or God directing in, so, in, in, in that way, like in the first person. Uh, very interesting, because you see that God was everywhere in that. But um, interestingly, that it, in Ruth, what we find is that though God does not have a, a vocal position, or does not make himself visible, quote-unquote, or audible, um, that that Ruth's life and Naomi's life was uh, led by God. And so, to me, it kind of tells the story of God in the normal. Over in the corner of the field so that Boaz would well, I'm back. And see her and she would catch his eye. Had she been late, she would have never met him. God will put you in the right place at the right time because he's working all things after the counsel of his own will. And he'll cause you to love who you love and like who you like and mm. meet who you meet and be drawn to who you're drawn to. Mm. Because what God is doing is bigger than you think. Now David is down here carrying lunch into legacy. Lunch into legacy. And he gets down just in time that he can hear the hoof prints. Can't you hear the hoof prints? The hoof prints of the Philistines coming. And they're coming out against the armies of Israel. And David is coming with his lunch. And he hurries up and checks his camel in for somebody to take care of his stuff. And runs down to the battlefield to talk to the men to see how his brothers are carrying his lunch. But it's bigger than you think. Just when they see the army of the Philistines out from the behind the ranks of the front lines of the army of the Philistines comes this giant named Goliath. And David happened, he happened, he happened to be there at the moment that yeah. Goliath was first presented. Yeah. And the Bible says in the 23rd verse, and he talked with them. And behold, there came up the champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out yeah. of the army of the Philistines, and spake according to the same words, and David heard them. Yeah. When Goliath came out there talking smack, David heard them. It, now, everybody heard him, but the Bible doesn't mention who else heard him because they heard it, but it didn't affect them like it affected David. When David heard him say that, David thought, oh, 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 now, wait a minute now, <laughs> wait a minute, mm. who is this uncircumcised right. Philistine that he should insult the armies of the living God? And so David starts asking questions. What shall be given to the man? To the man, the man asks the question, what shall be given to the man that killeth Goliath? <laughs> <laughs> and it seems so crazy. The kid David asked. So little, and Goliath was so big. And now you have to grapple when you have a great challenge and a small stature. The dichotomy between the two that have stepped on the stage is so wide that it seems insurmountable. He's so good. How could something Bishop so Jakes. little go after something so big? Somebody has got a great big ooh, 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 and a little ooh, bit of money. <laughs> Somebody's got a great big calling and a little tiny church. Wow. Somebody's got a great big dream and a little bit of help. The dichotomy between the smallness of the boy 
and the height of the giant is an opportunity for God to show himself strong. Don't you think that God could have used a big man against a big man? Yeah. Don't you think that God could have raised up a giant against a giant? Right. But God said, mm. my strength is made uh -huh. perfect in weakness. <clears throat> that so preach I'll right there. the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Mm. I want to talk to somebody that's listening at me right now who has felt inadequate. Yeah. I want you to see the dichotomy. Raise your hands. Big, tall giant if you've ever felt inadequate. Boy. I want you all to the time. understand that all the time. Jewish historians suggest to us that David was only about 4'10", maybe 5 feet at the most. Just a little boy, just a short little boy, 4'10", not even 5 feet. On the other hand, some have suggested that Goliath was as tall as 9 feet tall. So he was, in essence, twice the size of David. Little boy, huge giant. And anybody who was standing on the outside would think as big as God is, God would be with the big guy. But no, God! God! Good God Almighty, God! Is with the little guy. I never will forget when I started pastoring, they all made fun of me and they called me the boy pastor. And I was preaching in Montgomery, West Virginia, and I had about seven. There members, he is. And He's they talking said, to us. That boy is going out there to preach. And they was trying to make me feel bad about myself, but I fought him back. I said, David was a boy when he killed Goliath, but it didn't make him any less dead. God will use a little thing. That's why the enemy is trying to make you feel inadequate because he wants to slander your potentials mm, and your possibilities slander your potential. and deactivate your faith and your courage. And he's Ooh. using how things look to you to intimidate you so that you don't think you're the woman for the job, so that you don't think that you can preach well enough, so that you don't think that you can sing well enough, so that you don't think that you're worthy of where God is about to place you, so that you don't think that you're worthy to hang out with the crowd that you're about to step into. And you're coming into the situation from a perspective perspective of smallness because if the devil can convince you that you are small you are already defeated the bible said uh, that we were in their sight as grasshoppers and so were we in our own sight whenever you think you're a grasshopper you're not ready to possess the promised land you got to know mm. who you are in spite of your stature you have to understand who you are in spite of your wallet you have to know who you are in spite of your academics you you yes. have to know who you are in spite of your husband leaving you. You have to know who you are and what you got. I rebuke the spirit of inferiority. I rebuke Jesus. the spirit of inadequacy. I rebuke the spirit of incapacitation. Little is much when God gets in it. Because little becomes much of when you place it in the in masses. Israel, and five God loaves, five fishes. Thing. Good God. Of Beating 5,000. God! who owns heaven and earth. God who could have sent the angels from heaven. God who could have sent Michael and Gabriel. Show the little boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To get into a big fight. I want to talk to somebody. <laughs> the little to boy to get into right a big now. fight. Woo! And the odds are against you. <laughs> and it doesn't look good. And you're trying to get up your confidence. Woo! And you're trying to get up your strength. And Satan is so afraid yeah. that you would feel capable that he will cause your own brother, no. your own brethren to rise up against you and belittle you in front of everybody. And there David was, the little boy, coming up against a big thing, a thing that was twice his size. You would think that his brothers would have supported him, but the enemy used his brethren to try to further deflate his confidence Elijah mm. said, what are you doing up here? I know your foolery and your trickery. Why don't you go back home? Eliab is reinforcing David's spirit of inadequacies. I want you mm. to identify mm. your Eliabs. Oh, God. Everybody has those Eliabs in their lives. Oh, my People Lord. People that you let in that you thought would support you. 
people that you came down to help, and instead of them helping you, they bring you down. You, see, you don't get it yet. Mm. David was coming to bring Eliab's lunch, and instead of Eliab being grateful for the lunch, Eliab is trying to wow. turn down. Have you ever oh, 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 tried to help somebody oh, 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 who wasn't trying to help you? Have you ever oh, tried to God. encourage somebody who wasn't trying to encourage you? Have you Oof. ever said somebody that was trying to bring you down to your knees mm. and make you feel inferior in front of my them. god open the humiliation my god my god he my said god. where are them sheep them few sheep you supposed to be taking care of i could have understood it if it was anybody else but his brother i could have understood it if it would have been any other soldier i could have understood it had it come from the philistines i could have understood it had it come from somebody in the community i could have understood it had it come from the camp but from yeah. his own house his own house he is attacked Eliab rose up against him and i came to speak to somebody who was wounded by somebody that you loved i wanted to come to talk to somebody who already had to fight off feeling inadequate. And instead of getting some help from the people that love you, they reinforced your insecurity. They laughed at your dream and they told you, you don't belong on the level you're on. Well, I came to tell you if you didn't belong in this spot, God wouldn't have put you in it. And if you didn't have what it takes, God wouldn't have brought you down here into this fight. And if you didn't deserve to be here, you would not have been here. You were called for such a time as this. And this moment, this moment right here, this moment right here, this moment right here, God told me to tell you, it's bigger than you think. It's bigger than you think. It's bigger than you think. It's not about the bread. It's not about the cheese. It's not about the seed. It's not about the grain. This thing that's happening right now is bigger than you think. That's why Eliab is trying to discourage you because you're on to something. I love Pastora Jakes over there. Holler, you're on to something. <laughs> Mother Jakes is pumping him up. Yes, I love it. David didn't plan the fight that day. It wasn't what he saw. It wasn't what he planned. It wasn't what he had in mind. And when you just looked at what he saw, you would see how he could feel inadequate. Yeah. He's no match for Goliath. Right. He's not the size of Goliath. He has no weapons like Goliath. He has no army backup like Goliath. If you look at what he saw, you would quit. But the Bible doesn't emphasize what he saw. The Bible emphasizes what he heard. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't say when David saw that. It <laughs> says God. when he heard that. My Lord. In fact, the sentence is so simple. <laughs> and David heard him. For we walk not by sight. But faith. And faith. Ooh, we need some more. Healing and healing by the oh my goodness. This is a fight between sight and hearing. Sight and Are hearing. You don't believe the way it looks. <laughs> Or are you going to believe what you heard? <laughs> David heard him. Why did it say that David heard him and it doesn't mention anybody else hearing him? Are all the other men deaf? Oh, Absolutely God. not. Oh, my goodness. It's not just that David heard Goliath. Uh huh. It is how he heard Goliath. It's how he heard Goliath. It was how he heard it. Oh, my he goodness. He heard it as an outrage. Ooh. He heard it as an insult. He heard it as a mockery. He oh heard my it goodness. in a way that said, I will not let this go down. He heard it as a solace, as a mm. challenge. He mm. heard it as something to be riled mm. and to be fun. How you hear a thing determines how you respond to it. Mm. Mm. Some people that? can hear it and run. Everybody else heard it and they were horrified. Wah, 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 wah. David heard it and he got hot. Watch how you react to what you hear Woo. because it is some indication to what you have been empowered to change oh my goodness you can't change what you're not insulted by oh <laughs> you can't change what you're not insulted you by you can't change it until you hear it right oh my God. until you hear it as a challenge Woo. until you hear it as an insult until you hear it That's as something fire. to be against 
Yeah, that's lesson number Ooh. four. L lesson number four is this. Get this down. What I, you I believe gotta, I gotta will always overcome what you see. What you believe will always what overcome you what you see. Will always overcome what you see. Oh, my God. I don't care what you see. I don't care how out of sorts it is. Oh, I don't care how dichotomous it is. Woo! I don't care how ridiculous it is. What you believe uh -huh. will always fight off what you see. Oh, my God. Somebody what you right believe now is will in a always fight, fight off what you see. And everything you see says this is impossible and it's ridiculous. Woo! And I don't have the resources. And I don't have the backup. And I don't have the education. And I don't have the money. And I don't have the training. And I feel so small. And I feel mm, so mm, inadequate. Mm, mm. I didn't ask you how you feel. Mm, 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 I mm. asked you what do you believe. I don't David ask you how you feel. I ask you what you believe. Trifled with. David believed in the God of Israel. David believed in the <laughs> armies of the living God. David so believed good. that he was bigger than the enemy. David believed that he had the victory. David believed that he was an overcomer. David believed that he was more oh than my enough. God. David so believed good. that if God sent him, he was more than the world sent against him. David so believed oh that he could God. do it. Mm. That even without Eliab's help, oh, without the support of his friend, without the backup of his family, David said, I'll fight him. Let's go. Let's get out here. Let's get ah, out here. DJ you Horn. mess with the wrong That's white right. man this time. Let's go. Let's go. You underestimate me just because I'm four foot ten. Don't you look at what you see. <laughs> well, that's the you need to look I'm five foot four. Inside of me. <laughs> Greater is he. Greater is he. Me that, <laughs> <laughs> You've been underestimated all of your life. They've always told you what you couldn't be and what you couldn't do and what you couldn't mm, be. Mm, come on. And what you couldn't become, but the devil. Come on. Lie. This is a showdown moment in your life. Yes, this is yes. This a moment for God to show himself yes. in your life. This is a moment for God to show up. And in spite of how you feel, God is going to do what you believe. God's going so to do what you believe. Your feelings Come on. And tell yourself to get a grip. Speak to your emotions <laughs> and call them up under order. <laughs> Speak to every negative voice that said you belong Ooh, back in Lord the sheep field and say, no, I'm going to fight today. I'm going to fight today. Somebody uh -huh. said, I'm going to fight today. Uh -huh. I'm going to fight, fight, fight today. They said, I'm going to fight today. I'm going to fight today. Win or lose, shoot or dribble. I'm going to fight today. I'm going to fight today. Win or lose, shoot or dribble. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, here I come, Oshaya. You will not get the victory. You will not defeat. Me. Ooh, I got, I got a fire thing here going. I'm looking for a fire emoji right now. <laughs> Woo -wee. There he stood with his four foot self. There he stood with no sword and no shield. Uh -huh. There he stood with no training and no background. He wasn't even enlisted in the army. He wasn't even in the service, but he mm. made up in his mind, I will fight you back. Yes, I yes, 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 yes. God brought him before the king. Mm. Your gift Your will, gift make for you will make room for you and bring you before the king. Yes. Who ever heard of such a thing that a boy would be brought to the king as a solution to a national crisis over top of the whole army? They brought in this little boy. This little boy. And said, this little boy down here is talking smack. Yeah. While the army is running, he's uh -huh. talking smack. Now, the yeah. army looks big, but David was big on the inside. Yeah. He was little on the outside, yeah. but he was big on the inside. Uh -huh. And if you're big enough on the inside, they'll bring you before kings. They'll set you before princes. Mm. They'll move you into positions of power. <laughs> you know who you are. If you walk in the room like you're supposed to be there, people start paying attention. And all of the soldiers that should have been on the field brought David before the king. And the Lord told me to tell you to get ready for the shift. Oh, I got, I got something Get for y'all. Here we go. Shift. 
Get ready Woo! for the shift. That's fire. You're scared, but get ready That's for the shift. That's fire, y'all. You're nervous, but get ready for the shift. I know you feel incompetent, but get ready for the shift. I know you have insecurities, but get ready for the shift. Mm. I know you feel insufficient, but Woo! get ready for the shift. God! It's going to bring you before the king. God's going to bring you before the king. tell you that it's bigger than you think. And here David is standing before the king. And they brought him before the king. And the king told him, what you come to do? He said, I came to kill Goliath. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now look at this. Whoever killed Goliath would win Saul's daughter. Yeah, 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 yeah. Whoever killed Goliath would be enriched financially. Yeah. Whoever killed Goliath, their family would never have to pay taxes the rest of their life. Yeah. David is fighting for a family that don't even like him. Mm. You haven't fought until you fought for somebody who don't even appreciate you. My God. You haven't fought oh. until you fought for somebody. Where's that fire transition? You belong in the place Ooh that you're in. But the reason David was on the battlefield was if he killed Goliath, his daddy, who didn't even like him. <laughs> Sometimes you have to fight even when people don't appreciate you. Oh, my God. And David walks in the room and he says, I'll take him on. And he said, I will kill Goliath. Killing Goliath changed David's family's life. Killing, Killing Goliath changed Goliath David's family's changed life. Changed David's life. Killing Goliath changed how the army saw him. Killing Goliath God. set David up God. to be positioned ah. to be king. As I get ready to come to the close of this, oh message, I will warn you, whenever God is about to elevate you, uh -huh. there's always a Goliath in front of you. Goliath is always the gatekeeper on the next move of God. Gatekeeper in the next move of God. Oh. Until you find your Goliath, you won't find your throne. Whenever you're oh, pushed, until you oh, don't find your Goliath, you don't you find your throne. In my personal experience, whenever <laughs> you're close to your throne, Goliath will always stick up his ugly God, that's fine. To fight you. Jesus. He always Hallelujah. an alarm system that you're close to the treasure. Satan always leaves a Goliath to guard your treasure. When you find your Goliath, <laughs> you can find your treasure. Oh, yes. Wherever the giant is, that's where destiny is calling you. And when you see the giant, don't run from the giant. No. Because if you run from the giant, you will run from your destiny. <sighs> While everybody else was running away from it, yes, David yes, was yes, running toward yes, it. Yes, because yes, he knew yes. that the giant was the key uh -huh. to the next dimension in his life. Now hear me, I feel a prophetic influence coming over me right now. That Goliath that you see right now is proof positive that he's guarding your treasure. Oh, Jesus. When you take him out, God is going to open up something amazing for you. Oh, Don't run! From the giant. Run at him. Run straight at him. Now you have to understand, Jesus. they tried to give David Saul's armor. David put it on, but it didn't fit. Yeah. You can't fight your Goliath being somebody else. You have to fight your Goliath as yourself. Because it was you that God brought to the place. Don't show up as a stranger. Who am I talking to? Don't show up as nobody else. It's you that God blessed. It's you that God called. It's you that God anointed. It's you that God set aside. It's Jesus. you that God prepared for such a moment as this. Show up as yourself. And he shook off Saul's armor. And he oh. said, I can't. I can't fight in your armor. And you know what? I always made the mistake whenever yeah. I read. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. And David walks in the room and he says, I'll take him on. And he said, I will kill Goliath. Killing oh. as yourself. There he is. There he is. Looking amongst the crawdads. Sorry about that, guys. Picking out rocks. I want that one. 
Wait, wait, wait. Did I miss it? That was I think I missed it. Go back to the basics. Here we In go. an emergency. Wait, wait. He left home with five smooth stones, but he didn't. No. no. Where He's was I? Somebody uh. else. You have to find your Goliath as yourself yeah. because it was you that God brought to the there place. There we are. Don't show up as a stranger. Who am oh, I talking God. to? Don't show up as Ooh. nobody else. Ooh, I need that, that fire back. It's Woo. you that God called. It's you that God anointed. It's you that God set aside. It's you that God prepared for such a moment as this. Show up as yourself. And he shook off Saul's armor and he said, I can't. I can't fight in your armor. And you know what? I always made the mistake whenever I read this text. I thought that David left home with five smooth stones, but he didn't. No. He said, wait a minute. All he had with him was a bag. Yeah. A shepherd's bag. Uh-huh. And he had to go down to the brook. Yeah. And get him some stones. Because you have to realize David didn't even come down there to fight. So he, he, this was an emergency. <laughs> God, an emergency, oh my goodness, use for those of you that are in the creatives, for those of you that in are in business, you got to use what's within your, you don't even, somebody is going to hire you for you things you're not even prepared, in an emergency, you're going to request you to stand to before people Somebody you're not even said, prepared, you didn't even think said, about it, 43 years, can you stand to preach in an empty church, I said, because I started, we were in talking about that church. right in the beginning of the and video. Look at this. Oh, I started I in an empty church. Go <laughs> oh my God. Go back. Come go on, back Bishop. The wrong one. I know how. I came out of the storefront. I know how. To stand flat footed all by myself and preach the unadulterated word of God. We were talking about that right at the beginning. To fight with rocks. He didn't know nothing about shields. He didn't know nothing about swords. He didn't know nothing about catapults. He didn't know nothing about horses. All he knew how to fight with was rocks. But what out are you good at? God will use at. something you God got. will use it. God will use something that you're used to. God will My use God. something that you're familiar with. Ooh, yeah, 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 yeah. The would-be king of Israel <laughs> is down in the riverbed like a child looking amongst the crawdads, picking out rocks. I want that one. That one's too rough. That's so good. That one right here. That's so good. And that one, that one right there. And he made him a weapon. He made him a weapon. It wasn't even a slingshot. It was a shepherd's bag turned into a slingshot. Oh, it was a bag, it was hey. a rag and a rock. And he ran down on that field and said, what did you say? He ran down on that field, and the dichotomy was so strong that Goliath snickered and laughed his head. <laughs> That's what the hell got to sin against me today. And that little boy with that rag and that rock, that's what me. What am I, a dog? A dog? Did you send this kid down here to kill me? Right. The enemy was insulted that God would send so little Ooh. After so much, oh, 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 oh. What the devil didn't know. Insult the enemy dead. with your faith in God. Oh, <laughs> insult your enemy with your the faith in God. Didn't know it. Oh. That is for that old preach. That's what he don't know about you. He don't know you bigger than him. God's going to use you to insult the enemy. He, he doesn't know that God's <laughs> going to use you in a greater way than he thinks. In spite of how you grew up, in spite of what happened in your childhood, <laughs> in spite of your background, in spite of your hardship, in spite of your insecurities, the message that God gave to you is that it's bigger than you think. As I close this message today, I want you to understand this. Whatever you had in your mind that God was going to do, get it out. Mm. Mm. Whatever mm. you thought was going to happen, yeah. get rid of it. Yeah. Whatever you thought God might do in your life is too small. The Holy Ghost said, Holy Ghost. this is bigger than you think. Oh, God. That Lift was your good. hands. That was good. Open up your mouth. That was good. And say yes to the bigness. That was good. That was with good. your four foot self. Guys, <laughs> with my five foot four self. 
Oh yeah, man, that was fantastic. I think I think we, I think you pretty much preached his message. My God, I don't know about you, but I. What he's about to do in your life is bigger than you think. And I know he lied, didn't like it. And I know they didn't treat you right. They didn't welcome you. And I know they didn't do what you thought they would do when you thought they would do it. Oh my Lord. So good. But the Lord sent me here to tell you the reason he's caused all this hubbub in your life was to shift you into position. Because what he's getting ready to do is bigger. Uh, no, 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 no. It's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> think again. It's bigger than that. It's bigger than you think. What God is getting ready to do in your life is bigger than that. Oh my goodness. So I'll rehearse this for you. Number one, great people do little things with excellence. Number two, showing up for the battle is half the battle. Number three, providence makes sense out of the nonsensical. Mm. And number four, what you believe will always overcome what you see. That's so good. He threw that little bitty rock at Goliath. He could hardly even see it. But it was bigger than he thought. It hit him in the head. It knocked him to the ground. And then we see why David had no sword because God used Goliath's sword against to kill him. Yeah. God is going to use what your enemy is trying to use on you. God's going to use it on him. Jesus. And David was, and Goliath was beheaded by his own sword. By his own sword. I want you to praise God mm -hmm. while your Goliath bleeds. Mm. <laughs> all right everybody i think that's good wow man i've been blessed by that i'm i'm thinking of of uh, texting this donation <laughs> giving him giving the ministry some blessings and uh, uh planting a seed um for bishop here and the message that he preached my my god my god listen if you're watching this and you've never received jesus into your life I want to invite you to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Uh, you know, you can email me at, uh, let me see, where is this? You can, you can email, if you've given your life to Jesus, you can email me at Lemuel at ljaministries.com. If this message, my reaction or together has been a blessing to you and you don't know Jesus for yourself, I want to invite you to make Jesus the Lord of your life today. Reach out to me. Love you all at LJA Ministries. What a blessing this is. Amen. And uh, of course, if you want to support the ministry, you're welcome to do so right above uh, preaching here by Bishop. Anyway, uh, thank you all for joining me. Uh, for those that joined me live, thank you so much. This is the event, Lisa, Brother Bradley, uh, um, Elicio, even in the beginning. God bless you. Thank you, guys. I'm going to head out. And thank you guys so much for just watching this. This is going to be on YouTube. Go ahead and follow me over there at LJA Ministries on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video. Make sure you follow me. And don't forget to ring that notification bell so you can get a notification for every new video I post. All right. God bless you, Bishop. Thank you. I love you, man of God. I thank you for sharing your message with us. Uh, bless you, man of God. Amen. Always, always, always. God bless you. Amen. When the right one heard him. That's it. Woo-wee. Woo-wee. Got it. Where's my scooter, Dad? He ended up with Saul's daughter. He ended up rich and wealthy. You. Yeah.